Hey, good afternoon. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday the 17th of August 2024. This is my weekly analysis video where we have a look at some of the Forex pairs. I'm trading on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence trading methods from my books. Now, I hope everyone's weekend's going okay. Just straight from the get-go, my football team played yesterday and we had a good win. So all good there. Um, what's it, Saturday, just around lunchtime here, local for me. I don't know why I'm up so early on a Saturday. Probably have, it's probably good when you don't go out on a Friday night. Makes life a lot easier. Um, yeah, all right. So if you do like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I know they're not great quality videos. I understand that. But I just try to get the message across. So hopefully there's not too much background noise. I've told those children to be quiet, so let's get into it. Let's have a look at the charts. Uh, I use TradingView for all my analysis. So this is TradingView, this is my watch list on the right. As you can see, it's only a sample of the 28 major pairs available. I'm not a trade signal provider. Uh, these are just trade examples. If you take any trades based on my advice, you're an idiot. No, seriously. You're not an idiot, but do your own due diligence. Just do your own research. Don't take my word for it. I have losers, trust me. Uh, all right. So this is my watch list on the right. The highlighted in different colours are in alphabetical order. Uh, highlighted in light blue means there's trade or trades on and some action's been taken. By action, I mean some trade management. Highlighted in orange means there's something I want to talk about in this video. Uh, highlighted in dark blue, trade on, no action taken. And if there's no highlight, no trade on. Now, for Monday, there is only a bit of trade management. There's no new trade signals from Monday. The good thing about TradingView is I would know if, there's new, if there are new trading signals on Monday. Keep in mind, I'm only looking at these pairs. So if you come back and say to me, hey, Jim, the pound Aussie is showing a buy signal. It's not on this watch list. I'm not looking at it. I am looking at it probably in my private trading, but not on this list. All right, let's get into it. Uh, all right, so normally the most recent trade information is on the right here. So in this case, it's the Aussie Swiss. As I said, they're in alphabetical order. So the Aussie Swiss, sell trades are marked by red stuff. Red stuff, red lines. <laughs> Buy trades are normally blue, blue lines. So in this case, we're still in our old sell trade from the 16th of June uh, 2024, which is here. So on the opening of this candle, roughly I took the sell. There's my trade management there. Now the trades on the right normally got a bit more information about the trade itself. So in this case, we took a buy on the 8th of August. So we got the pair, the trade. Uh, generally, I put the initial stop loss in and what's happening with the trade. So I took a buy here. Now all these trades are called live at the time. What I mean by live is the new daily candle for me is 4 a.m. local. So that's 5 p.m. New York. I'm in Cambodia, so 4 a.m. is 5, 4 a.m. local for me is 5 p.m. in New York. Um, but I don't get out of bed till about 6.30, but not much happens in that two and a half hours. So I'm pretty confident that I catch the trades pretty close to where they open anyway. So it's not a big deal. Um, I do take a screenshot at the time. I call all my trades on the daily update, uh, which includes screenshots. And also those screenshots go in a shared folder everyone's got access to, and I actually post them on um, TradingView, but I have to keep it private because I'm using private scripts, which is a pain. I love to have them public in TradingView because it just makes my life a lot more accountable and uh, more transparent. Um, but, so I do take a screenshot and I share it, so I call all those on the in the daily update, which is in the Telegram channels and the... Uh, Facebook, <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was for a minute there. <laughs> Facebook group, which everyone's more than welcome to join. Any trade management's also called on those daily updates. So like I said, it's no, this is the trade I would have taken back in the day. It's called at the time. So you see you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as I say. So we're in the sell, we can't lose. So there's a stop for the sell there. They're locking in profit. In this buy that's heading in the right direction, obviously. Haven't taken any action yet. MACD Platinum's very close to going through the zero level. That's probably price getting up near these moving averages and the MACD Platinum going through the zero level. I'm going to probably look at close half and drag this stop right up nice and tight to put myself in a no-lose position. But the Oz Swiss looking good. Now, I know that everyone can't or doesn't like or can't 
take buy and sell trades at the same time. Now, there's a couple of different schools of thought on people would say, well, mate, if you're taking a buy trade here, you're so confident about the buy trade, why don't you just close the sell and take maximum profit? Yeah, I could, but, you know, it's like having insurance uh, on your house or your car or your life or whatever. You don't really want to use it, but I like to have it. It's just a peace of mind. It just makes me sleep better at night. It's just the way I trade. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Uh, it's just what you're comfortable with. So I get the question a lot. I, I get it. And I know people can't do it. There is ways around it. You can have sub accounts, etc. different brokers, balance your shorts and longs out in the, you know, between accounts, etc. There's no, There's no reason you can't do it. There's always a way around a problem. Um, so that's, but in this case, I can't lose on the sell and the buyer's looking pretty good on the Oz Swiss. Right, Aussie New Zealand, highlight an orange or yellow, whatever way you want to look at it. I'm sure, no offence to the female, <laughs> females in the group, if there's any. Uh, men tend to keep colours pretty simple, blue, green, red, etc. Whereas girls tend to have, you know, different, 13 different shades of yellow or pink or red or whatever. <laughs> what, do, what do they say? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And look, don't get me wrong, I love I love girls. So <laughs> it's just we think differently. We're wired differently. Ah, I digress. But we're on the Aussie New Zealand's highlight in orange. There's a reason for that. Uh, I was in this cell from the 18th of July, which just went sideways for a long time, eventually dropped down. First of all, it was closed half. Moved my stop down, moved my stop down again on the 14th of August. Uh, sorry, on the 6th, and on the 14th of August, bang, this candle here stopped out on the sell for an overall profit. I leave these on the charts just for the purposes of weekly video. Once the video is finished, I go back in the charts, tidy them up, remove these trades. So the sell has been stopped out for an overall profit. In the meantime, I'm in this buy. Uh, it went against me initially, and then it's popped up nicely. Not going anywhere fast. MACD platinum still below the zero level. Remember MACD platinum below the zero level on buy mode, above the zero level in sell mode. Here's the zero level here in case it's not clear. That's this level this here. Um, so we've, we've had a profit on the sell and we're in this buy that's really not taking off as much as I'd like. Uh, it was based on, hang on a sec. Uh, here's my notes here. Uh, supporting hidden bullish to burn. So I like it. So there's your Hidden bullish divergence, lower lows on the MACD platinum and higher lows on price. It's generally with the trend. Took a while, look, I took my trade on the open of this candle and for three days it went down. And I think someone did mention, yeah, I wouldn't have taken that trade in the groups. I get that, but I just follow my rules. And a lot of my trades, probably I'd say 80% of them go against me from the get go. Then people ask, why don't you place limit orders? But if it does, if it does take off in my favour, I, I want to be on it. That's why I've got to stop in place, protects my position. I don't care if it takes three days before it gets going, no big deal. But it's going in the right direction. We're out of the cell, that's why we're in the yellow highlight. Cad Swiss, Cad, Cad Swiss, highlight in yellow. Um, the reason it's highlight in yellow, on Monday, right. On Monday, which is the 19th of August, I've already put it in. I'm gonna go close half of this trade and I'm gonna move my stop up to 62803. So my stop at the moment is here. On Monday, I'm moving up to there. So I just left it there to show you where it was initially. All right, deleting that on Monday, the stop is going inside the entry level. This was a high risk trade to begin with, all right? So here's my notes on this buy. 8th of August took the buy. It's so this one basically took off straight away. Now, the reason I'm closing half, the MACD Platinum is just through the zero level. If you look over here on the left, I know it's a little bit hard to see because there's a crappy reddy brown colour, but that's positive on the red thing, trust me. So I'm closing half. It's a high risk trade to begin with. Uh, I'm closing half and bringing my stop right inside the entry level. So I'm putting myself in a no-lose position on that buy trade on Monday. So that's Monday. It's the only thing I'm doing on Monday. In the meantime, I'm still in this cell from the 8th of July and the stop is there and I can't lose on that. I try to keep my stop somewhere close to the moving averages, generally between the 50 and the 100. The other moving average being the 240 uh, linear weighted. These two, the 100 and the 50, are ex exped exponential, exped exp EMAs. <laughs> There's 
words I just can't wrap my tongue around. <laughs> and that's one of them. Uh, all right, EMA. You can Google that. Uh, yeah, so I try to keep my move, um, moving average, my stop around those moving averages. So it's a downtrend. I want to try and cash in as much of this downtrend as possible, but happy to take trends, uh, trades against the trend, which I have in this case. But we're going to put reduce the risk on that on Monday. That's CAD Swiss. Uh, Euro Aussie. All right, we're in a couple of trades here also. It's, it's happened a lot lately. Um, so I took this buy back here somewhere. There's a bit of a history in this. Don't worry, there's no green dots there. The, the, I did mention it's off the screen now. I based this on my MT5 platform. For some reason, Trading View didn't show me the red dot up here and didn't show me the new green dot here. So we just got on this green dot here, but there's a trend line break, so you could have taken the trade anywhere in here. Now that probably just rattled off and confused everyone, but I'm gonna buy from here. 2nd of July, 2024, stops here, can't lose on that. Stops around those moving averages, as I said. In the meantime, taking this sell on the 7th of August. You can read all about it there, it's a high risk trade. This green line, dashed line up here, the green, these normally represent big round numbers. In this case, it's the 1.7000 level. So a big round number. You'd be surprised how many traders have orders around those numbers. Uh, they'll be, it's the old chicken or the egg thing, as I always say. Self-fulfilling, is it or isn't it? I don't know. Um, same can be said about like a 200 moving average. And, you know, this moving average I use, which is the 240 linear weighted moving average, it's pretty pretty much the same as a 200 EMA. So I don't know why I use that. I just Someone used it and I just like it. I'm just trying to be a little bit different. Keep in mind the moving averages are just to give me a guide on a trend. And in this case... With the Euro Aussie, the Euro USD, they're all fairly tight and real, no, no real clear trends. All right, I took this sell and it's going in the right direction. It took off initially nicely, then it had a bit of a pullback back to the entry level. Now on Friday, it's heading back down again. MACD Platinum still not through the zero level, so not taking any action yet. Ideally, I want to get this close half, bring the stop down to somewhere in this level here. Put myself in a no lose position. Uh, with the buyer can't lose on. So looking good on the Euro Aussie. Euro CAD. Ah, right. In this buy, old buy from the 2nd of July. So let's have a look here. Yep, 2nd, 2nd of July. See, it went straight against me before going up. Uh, 12th of July closed half. 23rd of July, moved my stop up. 6th of August. Let's just make this a little bit easier to read. 6th of August. Move my stop up again. So I can't lose on the buy. Life's good. In the meantime, I took this sell on the 1st of August here. Should really have a grey line there. That's this note over here. Stopped out for a full loss the next day. So I took the sell there, stopped out on that count. Had another go at the sell here. So that's the 8th of August, second attempt. Uh, high risk trade, trading against the trend. Uh, second second attempt at a sell. Uh, went in my favour initially, but then popped up. Then Thursday started to come down again. It's getting all a little bit messy. This grey vertical line is just a warning line. There's a green dot on the MACD Platinum. Uh, but the good thing is I've got this protection from this buy. So even if this did go up and take out my stop, it's not the end of the world because this buy is making money. As long as it doesn't come down, take out my stop on the buy, then head up, take out my stop in the sell, then that gets ugly. But whilst this buy is open, I can relax, because if price does go up and up and up, who cares? As long as there's buys in play, it'll offset, it'll help offset any loss on any sell trade loss, if that makes sense. Again, we've got this insurance. Right, Euro USD. <coughs> I lost my voice there. Uh, we're in a buy trade uh, from the 5th of August. Let's speed that up so I can read it a little bit. Uh, this big round number here is the 1.1 level, the green dashed line. It's a big round number. You can see price spiked up, touched it, came down, spiked through it and dropped straight back down. Now it's popped up again. Now whether it's going to hold, who knows? I'm going to buy here. I was a little bit reluctant. Uh, and look at the moving average. They're very tight and flat. We had this high here, resistance, resistance. And it, let's just bring this line across a bit. Sometimes resistance, in this case, becomes support. So resistance, 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 
uh, you could say resistance. Remember, it's on the exact price. It's a zone. Came up. Now, is it support? And it's gone up. Now, we'll hopefully pop through the 1.10 level. Uh, I can't lose on this trade. I think I've already moved. Yeah, I've already moved my closed half, moved my stop up. Uh, I can look at bringing my stop up a bit tighter on this uh, and put myself in a better position. In the meantime, I'm drawing these trend lines for potential regular bearish divergence. Now, if MACD platinum keeps on going up, going up, it's no longer valid, I just remove those lines, just delete them. But in the meantime, it just gives me something. It's, it's a good, if you have some sort of potential divergence forming, it's probably a good time to tighten things up on your trade if you hadn't already. So looking good on the Euro USD. Can't lose on that trade, by the way. Cannot lose. Even if I stopped out tomorrow, it's going to be overall break even. Uh, pound Swiss, let's have a look. Again, we're in a couple of trades. We're in the sell from the 18th of July back here. Uh, yeah, we're in a bit of a range there. Um, we can't lose on this. Stops here. Can't lose. Then we've taken this buy on the 9th of August. High risk trade. Big down move. Normally when you get big moves like this, the price is a long way from the moving averages. MACD platinum a long way below the zero level. Even though there's no supporting divergence, that's it's a not a low risk trade, but it's a, it's a it's a smart trade. You know, it's worth a shot, as I'd say. Um, yeah, yeah, right there, worth a shot. Um, you know, because price does go back to the moving averages, or moving averages go to price. The MACD platinum's an oscillator, so it oscillates around the zero le- oscillates around the zero level. So it'll always go back to the zero level. Always, just a matter of when. It will always go back to the zero level. Just how long it takes, who knows. As with the moving averages, do they go to price or price goes to moving average? Who knows? But we took a buy here and it's heading in the right direction. MACD Platinum still a fair distance below the zero level. So hopefully it'll get up towards the moving averages here. I close half, drag my stop right up nice and tight, put myself in a no-lose position on the buy also. Pound yen. Actually, the trades are all looking pretty good this week. Uh, We've had a couple of... Pretty good weeks, considering August is a dog of a month to trade. It's the summer holidays in, in the Northern Hemisphere where a lot of the institutional traders take their summer break, which means they're away from the, the screens, obviously. So the volume's a bit lower uh, and it can get a bit boring, but we trade on the daily time frame. I'm trading 365 days a year. Or 366, is it this year? Is this a leap year, 24? Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> um, all right, so we're in a sell from the 12th of July up here. Good result, can't lose on that. You can read my trade management there. Another one where the MACD platinum's a long, uh, long way below the zero level, price a long way from the moving average, take the buy. And again, the MACD platinum's still below the zero level, which is here. So we've still got a distance and we're looking good. Again, looking good on both sides. Pound USD. Oh, that shot up on Friday, didn't it? All right, highlight and orange is the reason for that. I'm stopped out on this cell. Another one for the video. All right, let's have a look. So the Friday, the 19th of July, took this cell up here. You can see the divergence lines. The notes are long gone, but they, they were, would have been in the groups. Um, and they're in the shared folder still. Um, closed half on the 31st. Moved my stop down, a couple of stops. 13th of August, which is... This candle here, which is the same day I got my buy signal, uh, I was stopped out on the sell. So I, I was a bit peeved. I didn't get as much on the buy on this trade, so I tightened my stop up in this sell. <laughs> a little bit of revenge trading there, which was not not a great idea, but in hindsight, it's proved to be the smart move because it's just shot up nicely since. So I'm out of the sell. As I said, I'll just leave it on the video. Uh, for the, I'll leave it on the chart for the weekend video. Once the video is completed, I'll go and tidy this up and remove all this. So all we're looking at now is the buy from the 14th of August. Uh, there's nice hidden bullish divergence there. I got here, nice setup with the trend and supporting hidden bullish divergence. Price also found support at the 240 moving average, which is there. The sell trade is no longer in play. It's just left marked up on the chart for the weekly video. So yeah, exactly what I just said there. So the stops down here, MACD Platinum's not through the zero level yet. These green levels, 1.25, big round number, 
and this is the 1.3 level. You can see price got up to there and struggled to break through it and dropped straight down. Now we're heading back towards it again. Uh, it may coincide with the MACD platinum going through the zero level and price hitting that level. That's a definite close half type of stop up right up tight. So I can't lose on that. But looking good on the pound USD. New Zealand CAD. Ah, this is a bit of a dog's breakfast in New Zealand CAD at the moment. And this is the power I like trading. It's just been a little bit tough. And I'm even trading on the four-hour time frame at the moment. It's giving me a little bit of grief. It's not produced any great results, but I'm not losing on it, which is a good thing. Uh, all right. So we're in this buy here. We took this buy back here, which is 8th of July, and it was stopped out for a full loss. So I do take losses. So I'm not, I'm not Superman by any means. And, geez, talk about Superman. I've watched a couple of Marvel... Uh, movies on Netflix. I'm not a super hero. I'm not big on the Marvel or what's the other one? You know, I'm not, I, I don't get excited too much about it, but I watch them every now and then. I, it, I, I, get, I get a bit of a giggle out of the Flash movies. <laughs> but um, yeah, this, I don't know. There just seems so many of these movies, I can't keep track of them. Um, and to, just for the record, I've never seen a movie with Ant-Man or what's the other one? Wolverine. Never seen any of those movies yet. Uh, everyone raves about them. All right, let's get back to it. New Zealand CAD. Took this buy here and it's just gone absolutely sideways. MACD, platinum through the zero level. Ninth of all was closed half. I don't even think that was a... Uh, on the open of this candle here, this little bearish candle. So in here, closed half. Brought my stop up nice and tight. And it shot up nicely, broke this... A little bit of a high uh, resistance level on price shot up nicely. Then New Zealand interest rate news come out. Uh, if you recall during the week, it was an unexpected rate cut. Bang, down she went. And it dropped down close to my stop. But Friday, bang, straight back up again. So no idea where it's going. But the good thing is I can't lose on this trade. So if it keeps on going up, who cares? In the meantime, I'm marking up um, divergence, potential divergence here, uh, hidden Bearish divergence, <coughs> if it stays relevant or valid, MACD platinum is above the zero level, so I'm in sell mode, hence the grey vertical line as I lose my voice here. All right, let's move on. Silver, XAG, USD. Uh, I took a buy in here, which is the 1st of August. Lost, stopped out for a full loss. On the 5th, so I'm assuming it's that candle there. Yep, on that candle somewhere, so stopped out there and it dragged down a little bit. New buy signal here and a trend line break, which is good. MACD platinum still below the zero level. Took the buy. It's my second attempt at it. Uh, took a couple of days to get going, but Thursday and Friday have been kind. MACD platinum still just below the zero level, heading in the right direction. So we're helping offset a little bit of that previous loss. So, And I'm pretty sure I'm in the silver trades in my private trading, which is good with multi-hedge trading. So it's heading in the right direction. It's getting me out of the poo on that. So it looks good on silver at the moment. Now, the next trade is more for curiosity. It's the US dollar against uh, these six currencies here. And it's heading down, as you can see. In the meantime, we've got potential divergence forming. The last signal was this sell here. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, that's a, not a bad sell signal, that. Look at the trend. Here we go. Come down, lower lows on price. Lower highs, so that sell signal, even though the MACD platform is just above the zero level, that's not a bad signal, and it's proved in hindsight to be a good signal. And it's just dropping down. But in the meantime, we've got this potential regular bullish divergence forming. US 500, US stock market, this is the big pullback that everyone's, the world's ending, <laughs> just been in the news, and straight away we've got a buy signal a few days later. <laughs> Uh, hidden bullish divergence there, as you can see it. It wasn't dumb, it wasn't the old one two, hidden followed by regular. Uh, it just was hidden followed by nothing and new buy signal here. Like I say, a lot of these hidden divergences work out eventually. Uh, and this one has, we're straight back up faster. So it's all good. This is the high up here, the high. So let's see if we can break that. Let's just keep that real. Yeah, there we go. And BTC, Bitcoin, the world was ending here too. It dropped down to 50,000 and it shot up again. 
back up to the 60,000 level, which is a bit of a sticking point for it. 60, there's a 70 up there, 50, so it was sort of no man's land, I guess. Um, last thing was this buy here. No divergence there, no, nah, no, nah, it's just no gun, nowhere fast. It's always tough taking a signal on a big candle like that too, so who knows. All right, that's me. I've talked for 25 minutes. Uh, if you do hit like, if you do like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It's always greatly appreciated. My channel, my YouTube channel actually goes nowhere. And to be honest, probably what's it, earn me $30, $40 a month, if that. I'd love to be one of these people with you know, a million subscribers and you know, thousands and thousands of views. Jeez, they must rack up some money on the YouTube channel. But it's not my income stream by any means. And as you can tell by the production, it's uh, far from it. But I just get the message across, helps me keep focused. It gives me something to do on Saturday. It's a bit of a routine. Um, you know, on my weekends, I basically I look at a lot of charts on Saturdays. Sunday, I do not do, and I, I, the only thing I'm doing on Sundays is watching YouTube videos which normally means um, football highlights. Sport's a big part of my Sunday, so I don't answer any emails. I don't do anything trading related at all. All right, enjoy the weekend all. Stay safe wherever you are. Thank you for watching and speak to you good folks sometime next week. Cheers.